بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله القريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm recording a response to a speech called Unity Within the Ummah and Labels and this is by an individual I think based in London called Abu Abdis Salam um, who is a Salafi although he doesn't want to call himself a Salafi I don't know why in fact I do know why we'll, we'll come to that later now the reason I don't I'm responding to this speech is because um, this is representative of a type of marketing that is going on within the Muslim community by those people who are Salafis, those people who are Wahhabis, they like to call themselves Salafis, but in fact they are Wahhabis, um, who are trying to market their understanding of Islam, their sectarian understanding of Islam, to the mainstream Muslims, the al Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Um, and they do it by saying, oh, we are just Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that our name is Muslim in the Quran. And we don't belong to any sect or group. We don't have any label. And in fact, these sects and groups and labels, they are dividing the ummah, etc, etc. So in the first instance, they are being disingenuous because they do belong to a sect. And it's very clear from this individual speech, he mentions this Salafi slogan about seven times within the space of a few minutes. We must follow the Quran, the Sunnah and the way of the early Muslim scholars. This is a Salafi slogan uh, about their methodology. And in fact, they don't follow the Quran, the Sunnah and the way of the early Muslim scholars, as will be clear when I'm, uh, from what I'm about to say about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Holy Quran about sects, what the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has said about sects and groups, and also about what Sahabi Akram, Tabi'in, Taba Tabi'in have said about sects and groups and labels in Islam. So these are, th- first of all, these are three separate things, sects, groups, and labels. They're three different things with three different rulings in Islam. So I just want to, first of all, just refer to what um, and this is and this is, this is the other aspects of the speech which I'm not happy about because he's misleading the general public about this subject, about the subject of sects, groups, and labels in Islam. So I want to refer to what the Quran says. The Quran says in Surah Ali Imran, in Ayah from um, looking at the section from Ayah 103 through to 107. So firstly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the Muslim ummah and telling them to hold fast all together to the rope of Allah and don't be divided. So this is the first instruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to be united. And no one disagrees about this. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the uh, ayah 104, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there must be amongst you a community and know as a group which calls the good uh, and enjoins what is right and good and forbids everything that is evil and they are the ones who are prosperous this ayah is telling us that yes there can be groups from amongst the muslims you can have groups that are specializing in dawah you can have groups which are specializing in political matters And this is just logical anyway, because in any community, in any society, you need different people to specialize in different things. Not everyone can be a specialist in the same things. Um, And and the Prophet ﷺ has compared the ummah to a body. And the different parts of the body do not all do the same things. Um, He is talking about the early Muslims, they're all these people who did all the same things. This is not true. The great Imams of the early Muslims like Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, they were not Mujahideen. They did not fight in Jihad. And this is because they knew full well that Jihad, meaning going and fighting the non-believers, is not Fard al-Ain. It is Fard al-Kifaya. It is not a, a duty for every single Muslim 
it is a duty for a, for some Muslims to go and do. Similarly, being ulama is not for every single Muslim. It is for those people who want to go and fulfill that fardul kifaya. They will become ulama and they will guide other people through their knowledge. So this is the first thing, that there is nothing wrong with having groups in Islam. Whether they are groups for da'wah, like Dawati Islami, groups for social reform, like Hijaz community, there's nothing wrong with having different groups in Islam. Um, second, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Be not as those who split into parties or sects and follow different ways after the manifest truth has come to them. Those are the ones for whom there is a tremendous punishment. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, On the day when some faces turn bright and some faces turn dark. Now, who, what, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about here? Is he talking about the believers and the disbelievers? No. He's talking about those people who divided from the Muslim ummah and made sects. So, groups are okay. Sects are not okay. So, and the reason we know this is about sects and it's not about um, the believers and disbelievers is because we have the tafsir of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu which is recorded in tafsir ibn Kathir. Um, he mentions that those people whose faces will be bright belong to al sunnati wal jama the people of sunnah and the people of congregation. And the people whose faces will turn black are the people of Bida and Hawa. In other words, the different sects in the, who have left al sunnati wal jama and they have brought innovations into the religion. So they've introduced new beliefs, new understandings of the religion, which are contrary to the beliefs of the al sunnati wal jama So this label, al sunnati wal jama is a label which is known to the Sahabi Akram and used by the Sahabi Akram to identify the true Muslims, those Muslims who are following the Sunnah of Rasulullah Wasallam in their beliefs and in their actions. And they're the people of Jama'ah. In other words, they're following the majority of the ulama, not a small minority group of Muslims. And the sects, we had the sects in the time of the Salaf as well. So people say, well, just the early Muslim scholars. Well, in fact, there were different sects of Muslims even in the time of Sahabi Ikram. There was the Khawarij that emerged during the time of Sayyidina Ali Karimallahu wa Chul Qareem. And they fought against Sayyidina Ali Karimallahu wa Chul Qareem. So what did Sayyidina Ali do? Did he just say, well, we should be united with them. We should, we should find a way. We shouldn't use labels. We should not call them Khawarij. We should not call ourselves Sunnis. No, he didn't do this. First, he sent, his, he sent Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas to debate with the leaders of that group. And by debating with them and bringing proofs from the Qur'an and Sunnah, many of those people were converted back to the way of al sunnati wal jama And after that, he fought those people who stubbornly remained upon uh, the Khawarij belief because they were people who were armed and they were causing fitna uh, in the Muslim community. They were killing Muslims, um, people who said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah, um, because they did not follow their innovated understanding of Islam. So this is the um, attitude of Sahabi Ikram to the misguided sects. They did not uh, want to have unity with them. And we can see this also with the Salaf. For example, Imam Abu Hanifa, he wrote a book called uh, Al-Fiqh Al-Akbar, which is about Aqidah. And he talks about that we are, um, this is the beliefs of the Sunnis. And he talks against the beliefs of the misguided sects. So this is, and indeed Imam Ahmed bin Humble did not just refer to himself as Sunni, but because of his stance against the misguided sect, at that time the Mutazala, he was named Imam al-Sunnati wal-Jama'ah by the ulama of that time. So the term Sunni is something that every Sunni Muslim should be proud of and always refer to himself as a Sunni Muslim. And it's not just sufficient to say, I am a Muslim. Second of all, you should be aware that there are misguided sects. And the guidance and the Prophet 
mentioned this, and this is also mentioned in the tafsir of these of these ayah as well, in tafsir Ibn Kathir, that the um will divide into 73 sects. 72 of those will be in Jahannam, uh, except, and the, the one which will be in Jannah will be the one that I am upon, in other words, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is upon, and the, which my Sahaba are upon. So, this is this is a very very clear from the Quran, from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu taala sallallahu taala alayhi wa and from Sahabi Ikram, Tabiin, Taba Tabiin, about what is the right uh, approach towards the different sects in Islam. Now, um, the other thing that was mentioned, so by calling themselves just Muslims. The Salafis are doing something which uh, Sunni Muslims never did. They never just call themselves Muslims. No, nobody has ever done this since the time of Khulafa Rashida. Just call themselves Muslims. This is not correct. Now, in terms of labels, there's nothing wrong with having labels in Islam. Indeed, for uh, a thousand years, Muslims have been calling themselves Sunni Muslims and Sunni Muslims have been calling themselves Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi, uh, Hanbali and they've been calling themselves Naqshbandi and Shisti and Qadiri. There's nothing wrong with these labels and when we were powerful, um, when Muslims had control over half the world, they were using these labels and it was not causing any division in Islam. Because Allah Sunnati wal Jama accepts that there are uh, different legal schools, that there are different uh, schools of spiritual purification, that there are, and so to identify yourselves as one of those schools is not a problem. The problem is when you have intolerant people who belong to misguided sects, like the Wahhabis, the Salafis, then this is when. Uh, when their intolerance comes in, then this is when there's a problem. So in terms of and in terms of that, when they say just follow Quran, Sunnah, and the way of the early Muslim scholars, this is not what the al Sunnati wal Jama ever said. Yes, we need to follow the Quran and the Sunnah, and the understanding of the early Muslim scholars who were Sunni. And the later Muslim scholars who are Sunni. So the the criterion is being Sunni and adhering to Sunni ulama, not adhering to um, these innovated criteria. And the reality is their beliefs cannot be found amongst the understanding of the early Sunni Muslim scholars. They, you, you will find Salafis when they teach about Tawheed, they teach about three types of Tawheed and three types of Shirk. Tawheed al rububiyya Tawheed al Tawheed Asma wa Sifa. We don't find this categorizations being mentioned by any of the Salaf. Not one of them mentioned this categorizations, nor did they divide Shirk into three different types. Now it's on the basis of them dividing Shirk into three different types which was not known by the Salaf, not by the Sunni Salaf, not by the Salaf of any of the different sects, because this whole concept did not exist amongst anybody at that time. But it's based upon this concept, which was in, introduced first by Ibn Taymiyyah, about 500 years after the Prophet wasalam, and then revived and made into something to justify killing Muslims by Ibn Abdul Wahhab of Najd, that this concept is the biggest concept of disunity in the Muslims today. When, why do we find disunity amongst Muslims today? Because of this exaggerated and innovated understanding of Tawheed and exaggerated and innovated understanding of Shirk. So if somebody says, asks the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam or awliya ikram to make dua for them or to ask them for help, which is allowed and permissible according to all four madhahib, all four schools of Sunni Islam, it's acceptable, permissible, encouraged. 
And these people who are now talking about unity all the time, these are the people who says this is shirk al-akbar and the person who does this becomes a mushrik. Um, the al sunnati wal Jamaa say the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is aware of his ummah, that he can see the members of his ummah, that he can hear them when they uh, send salat and salam upon him, that if they ask him for help that he can hear them. So the Wahhabis, they say that this is shirk. And this is Shirk al-Akbar, which takes somebody outside the fold of Islam and makes them a mushrik. Similarly, the al sunnati wal Jamaa say the Prophet wasallam has been given so much knowledge of the unseen from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than any other created being. According to the Wahhabis, this is Shirk al-Akbar, which takes somebody outside the fold of Islam and makes them a mushrik. This is, and because of this, at the time of Ibn Abdul Wahhab of Najd, who was not a good person, he was an innovator, that the Muslims were slaughtered on the basis that they had become mushrik. They, he and his followers fought against the Ottoman Empire, the great Sunni Empire. And although Ibn Abdul Wahhab had died by this point, his immediate followers, his companions, entered into the Hijaz, they slaughtered the people of Ataif, you know, as the men, the women and the children, for being, according to them, they had left Islam and become mushriks, they destroyed libraries, they did all kinds of horrific things, and alhamdulillah, they were put down by the Ottoman forces at that time. Now, and then later on, now we have the same thing in this time, and just in the last 10 years, how many Muslims in how many countries have been murdered? Men, women, children, civilians been murdered by groups that are inspired and funded by Wahhabis who take from the, the books of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. Um, they following, they identify themselves as Salafi uh, and they identify themselves as followers of ibn Abdul Wahhab Wahhab's understanding they have murdered so many people they've turned people into slaves from we can say from Nigeria to Mauritania to Libya to Somalia to Yemen to Syria to Iraq to Afghanistan all over the Muslim world the Muslim world is burning because of these groups who are following the Wahhabi Salafi way and for them to come and now say they want unity, um, and again it's a disingenuous unity, because they're saying, oh, we are just Muslims. Now they're saying they're just Muslims, why? Because first of all, people caught on to them that they were Wahhabis and they are not Sunnis. I can tell you, I can remember back in 2001, Bilal Phillips at the Queen Mary University of London uh, uh, dinner, he said, it used to be a great thing, people were proud to call themselves Wahhabis, but we don't call ourselves Wahhabis anymore. And so they start to call themselves Salafis, and the term Salafi is, is, a, is a misnomer anyway. I can call myself a Hanafi, means I am a follower of Imam Abu Hanifa. Or I can call myself an Arabi, means I am an Arab. I am not an Arab, but I am giving you an example. So... Hanafi means I'm following a particular person. Arabi means I belong to a particular people. Now the Salaf are a group of people. So if you're saying you are Salafi, means you belong to the early Muslims. So you can't belong to the early Muslims. The early Muslims have long gone. And Salaf, Salaf literally means those people who preceded us. So you can't be somebody who precedes yourself. So this is a ridiculous thing for them to say in any case. Now... So they call themselves Salafi. Now that has become famous now that Salafis are behind all this violence and terrorism and everything else. So now they say we're just Muslims. Uh, we don't have any sect. We don't have any group. And they know that Muslims want unity. So this is what they use. Now it is clear from the Quran. It is clear from the Sunnah. It is clear from what the Salaf understood and explained to us. If we want unity then we need to stick to the al sunnati wal jama means we need to stick to the majority group and we need to shun those people who are preaching 
different understandings of the religion, which go against the majority understandings. Um, and we don't listen to their speeches, we don't take our religion from them. We need to learn what it means to be a Sunni Muslim and understand that when somebody comes and they have a belief which is not a Sunni belief and they are claiming to be a scholar or a teacher, we don't take our religion from them. Um, we will happily try and help and guide the average Muslim but we don't take our religion from people who are, have an Aqidah which is different to the al sunnati wal Jama'ah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. Ameen wal-akhir. The one alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.